to portray a kind of perfect um, childhood yeah. of, of DeLorean. Yeah, the, a kind of American dream um, composite. His childhood was quite, or became quite contested because he claimed to have been, you know, basically kind of uh, very kind of dirt, dirt poor. Um, and but um, as as he became more, much more kind of prominent figure, people looked into this and found out that in fact. He wasn't quite as poor as he claimed to be. But the one, the one sort of thing that they all agreed on was that he had a very a contentious relationship with his father. And I mean, I found this this film with a guy that a kid that kind of looked like mm -hmm. he could be a young John DeLorean who happened to knock it on with his father. So you know <laughs> that um, that seemed to to um, you know that kind of fit the bill with that. Mm -hmm. But then I mean, it, it was all sort of like. Obviously, the, the the original kind of sound has been removed, and then, um, but just go back to what you were saying about the the different kind of styles as well. And so you go from that that, that um, the early black and white footage, and then there's much more kind of poppy uh, promotional um, uh, sort of Beach Boys. Although it's not the Beach Boys, it's um, Ronnie and the Daytonas. <laughs> but then also like the the that. Um, you know that that so that did exist, but then also the sort of reaction to that, and the way that, like in the sixties, the sort of countercultural reaction to taking that kind of form and um, and showing a showing a kind of a darker side. So that so that sort of gives way to um, to the to the oil crisis and. Um, America in the course of that song. Um, so you're putting those two things right up against each other to show the those two things that are coexisting at the same time, and then you move into uh, uh, you, you move into much more kind of verite footage mm -hmm. of DeLorean, which is, I found quite fascinating. It, the look of his face, and you, and we were talking earlier about you know specifically choosing certain kinds of images that deconstruct him, and and you were telling me that he'd actually had plastic surgery on his chin yeah yeah and uh, <laughs> so I mean he, he, he not only is the kind of his his persona a construct but his face is also quite constructed yeah yeah I, I mean what what was do you think that was part of why you were attracted to him that he has all these um kind of paradoxes within him yeah I mean the thing the, the thing the thing that I found really interesting about, I mean, it wasn't necessarily kind of very useful in terms of making a film about somebody, but or kind of using footage of somebody. But he has this, like, by all accounts, like the various different books that I read about him, and even people who, who weren't um, weren't that kind of keen on him, or you know, were quite critical of him. Um, they, the one thing that they did remark on was the fact that he had this real kind of magnetism, this real charisma. But, I mean, it doesn't come across at all, like, in the footage. I think it's just, maybe it's something to do with proximity. And in fact, I think he's quite shy, quite a nervous character. Um, and that, I mean, it, there's very little in terms of, um, he doesn't lose the role of himself. He doesn't kind of say something he shouldn't say, or there's no, there's, not really very many kind of revealing moments like that, whereas with Bernadette Devil and they're kind of there in abundance, like that she's um, uh, she's much more, there's, there's much more of that to kind of draw on. Um, but I think, I mean, I think that his, his whole kind of demeanor, his whole physical appearance did have a lot. To, and I mean, if you, I mean, you have to remember like in, um, you know, in the late 70s, like when he came to, to Northern Ireland, I mean, this kind of six foot four, tanned, very well groomed, very good mm. teeth, you know, just in, it, in and of itself. Chiseled chin. Yeah, yeah, he kind of looked like a cowboy, you know, yeah. in and of itself. Like that, that was kind of enough, mm. you know, and I mean, it, it probably doesn't seem like enough now, but that, that, I think that that really did sort of carry so much weight then that just his physically, like that he was so kind of impressive, so tall and, mm -hmm. you know, um, and actually, I think probably like at that stage of his life as well, at his most handsome as well. You know, I think that when he was younger, he was a bit sort of podgy, and you know, um, he did so he did figure it out. He let himself 
gold grey. So I'm going to stop there. Yeah. Um, so moving very interestingly onto the very last part of the the film, um, which is um, much more of a construction. I mean, interestingly, when I um, was watching it. Um, uh, and I was sat next to a member of the public and in the last third he suddenly turned to me and he said is it just me or are those actors but I mean I think that was about kind of 15 minutes in and he'd been you could tell that he was sort of beginning to kind of work it out um, because you know it really is very realistic but that's quite a departure for you isn't it that's the first time that you were dealing with actors that you were using scripted material um, what was it you were trying to achieve and also It'd be interesting just to share with us, you know, you, th how you felt working with actors, because obviously you've always been looking at a screen and dealing with characters in found footage, you know, behind literally the glass screen. But this is suddenly you've got the real people in front of the camera having to direct them. How, how you found that mm -hmm. experience? It's not kind of without precedent. It's not without precedent in terms of uh, of, of documentary tradition. I think if like. Now, in particular, the whole sort of idea about docutainment. Um, but then, like, if you go back to the '80s as well, like, the, the, there was much more, um, much more of a, the idea of these kind of earnest kind of TV sort of, of um, dramas that that uh, portrayed such things, or you know, that were you know, um, but kind of represented as uh, or presented as being reality. So. So that's that's the first thing to say about that. I mean, I think, you know, in terms of the overall, um, in, in terms of how how all the, the various different parts of the film function, that, it, well, the, the final section isn't. Um, I mean, there's nothing more kind of real, or there's not. It doesn't. It doesn't contain any more truth than any other section of the film does. Um, but um, I mean, I think basically the the idea, the, the thing that I was because I mean, a, a lot of it was um, a lot of it was particularly the, the say the first ten minutes of the dialogue in that film. It is kind of based on it's almost verbatim. It's based on stuff that I'd read and uh, interviews that I'd watched. Um, and this um, is more the perspective of the workers, of the people that were in the fa in the DeLorean factory, yeah. which itself was interesting because it kind of had both Catholics and Protestants mm. working there. It, it was an integrated workforce by default, basically. Mm. The jobs were intended for Catholics in West, West Belfast. It was supposed to be this kind of um, balm for, you know, because it was chronic unemployment. It was very, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, it was the place that, it, it was most affected by by the troubles as well. In fact, Bobby Sands was from the the estate right next to where the DeLorean factory is. So the jobs were intended for Catholics, but because it was set up in such a hurry, basically the people that DeLorean needed, the people who had experience in um, some sort of manufacturing industry, happened to be Protestant. So he had to he had to take these people on in a hurry. He couldn't afford to wait around to train all these people. So by default it was an integrated, but they did actually, um, they paid a lot, they, it, was, it wasn't as if they were all kind of thrown together and, and just, but there, there was, it was quite kind of um, considerately done. There was, uh, you know, you weren't, you weren't allowed to, to, you know, to kind of visibly display your affinity in any way. And, mm -hmm. So there were there were kind of efforts made, but also uh, like for you know the early eighties, um, there were actually women on the assembly line, which was very kind of pioneering in and of itself. Why is it that you do kind of resist con conclusions or you resist closure within your films? I mean, again with Bernadette Devlin, you stop at quite an interesting point and. Uh, before really uh, the end, and it's the same here. Yeah, you're correct. They, they don't. There's no kind of aspiration that these are conclusive or comprehensive mm -hmm. in any way, because I think that that's part of part of what I'm interested in, in looking at. Part of the part of the question that I'm interested in posing is like, you know, is this actually? I mean, is this a reasonable expectation that you would come to something like this and expect to? Um, to have some kind of window on reality from it. 